So after Joe Manchin announced that he was in opposition to the For the People Act, you had a lot of progressives finally speak up and condemn him. You had AOC on CNN call out his Koch brother connection. You had Jamal Bowman say that he's the new Mitch McConnell. And now, this week, Democratic Party leadership, they're telling progressives, hold back a little bit. We don't want you being too mean to Joe Manchin. This is very irritating to me. So Politico reporter Sarah Ferris reports Schumer and Pelosi have been urging Democrats not to go after Manchin and company when it comes to voting rights. Schumer told outside groups not to bully Manchin ahead of S1 vote, and Pelosi told steering members not to criticize individual senators. So right off the bat, this irritates me because if you don't name and shame these people, I don't know what else is going to work. I'm not saying that like being very abrasive and argumentative is going to pay off, but I know that being polite, trying to hold hands and sing kumbaya with folks like Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin, that hasn't paid off. So this right here, they're basically saying we should coddle Joe Manchin because we don't want you to be too mean. We don't want to scare him away. And this is just really frustrating to me. So for more on this, we go to the scoop from Sarah Ferris, and it reads, Liberals have been unleashing their growing frustration at Senator Joe Manchin over his opposition to their party's signature voting rights package ahead of an expected Senate vote next week. But for now, at least, top Democrats are urging their members to hold their fire. As Manchin remains a holdout on S1, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is telling outside groups not to try to bully Manchin, but to instead focus on the historical and factual arguments related to the legislation, according to sources familiar with his remarks. Well, I'm sure that's going to resonate when his donors are telling him otherwise. In a private meeting Monday night, Speaker Nancy Pelosi also advised lawmakers not to vilify individual senators on the issue, according to several people who attended. While she did not single out Manchin by name, multiple Democrats said they believed she was referring to Manchin, the only Senate Democrat to publicly denounce his opposition to S-1. The call to back off comes amid fierce criticism of Manchin from progressive groups and fellow Democrats in Congress. They're also upset with the West Virginian for defending the filibuster and insisting on a bipartisan infrastructure bill. Representative Jamal Bowman recently called the West Virginia senator the new Mitch McConnell. Earlier this week, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said she doesn't buy Manchin's calls for bipartisanship on voting matters and speculated that his opposition is more likely tied to his wariness of Democrats' effort to rein in dark money. Manchin remains unmoved by all of this. His resistance to the elections bill came into focus again Tuesday. He skipped a Senate Democratic lunch where a group of Texas lawmakers urged passage of S-1 and warned of the GOP's efforts to restrict voting access. Manchin staff did meet with the group, though a source familiar said the Texas group did not request a meeting with the senator until the day of their visit. Now, also, reportedly, Joe Manchin is peeved, not their words, but mine, that progressives and people around the country think that they know what's better for West Virginia than he knows what's better for West Virginia. Um, except that assumes that Joe Manchin just is making this decision individually after doing research, after reading the bill, but that's not what's happening. He's literally opposing the bill because the Koch brothers and their network, they're lobbying him to do just that. So that's why I find this extremely naive and, and quite frankly stupid if Democrats actually want to get this passed, like Democratic Party leadership, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, because you're not going to win him over by talking to him more politely and coddling him and trying to butter him up. The reason he's opposed to this in the first place is because he's corrupt. And the only way I think that you can actually get him to break is if you call out the specific root cause that's driving his unwillingness to support something that he supported back in 2019. And that is this link with the Coke network, the lobbying that they're doing. He's literally reciting their talking points. They're running this effort to um, basically get politicians to reject the partisanship in dc and what does he say is his reasoning for opposing the for the people act oh it's too partisan no republicans support it right but they didn't support it back in 2019 that didn't stop you from co-sponsoring it back then so i mean the specific issue here is the corruption that is why he's unwilling to support it so i don't think that being nice is going to get him to change his mind when money talks so I, I think that this weakness right here, aside from the corruption of Nancy Pelosi herself and Chuck Schumer himself, that's part of the reason why Democrats are so 
ineffectual when it comes to governance. Because Republicans, no matter what, it doesn't matter what the political context is, how feasible a policy is, whether or not it will or won't get passed, they just scream at the top of their lungs, belligerently so, and they forcefully advocate for what they want, regardless of how unpopular it may be. And Democrats, they're so afraid, they're walking on eggshells around these conservatives and their party, and as a result, their unwillingness to take a stand, it's going to lead to them losing everything. I mean, if they don't pass the For the People Act, this is going to lead to Democrats losing. I mean, in Republican-controlled states across the country, they are cracking down on voting rights. Specifically, they're undoing the things that drove higher voter turnout in 2020. And if Democrats think that they're going to be able to win future elections easily, if these laws don't get overturned, if they don't pass the For the People Act, they're horribly mistaken. And the For the People Act is not a panacea. Like, it's not going to be the end-all be-all that saves American democracy, but is it a step in the right direction? And will that at least undo all of the damage caused around the country driven by this stop-the-steal hysteria to crack down on voting rights? Yes. So, I mean, if their strategy here of calling Joe Manchin works, okay, great. But this strategy of being weak and spineless has never paid off for Democrats. And I don't think that's going to happen now. So it's really frustrating that they're trying to basically forcefully get Democrats who are fighting for people finally to shut up, to censor themselves. When they condemn Ilhan Omar, they go after progressives all the time. It's just, it's really hypocritical. It's unfair. And it's frustrating. I hope that Democrats like Jamal Bowman, AOC, they don't take advice of leadership and they just do what I think is actually going to work, or at least what hasn't really been tried, naming and shaming, because that's why Joe Manchin is against the For the People Act. It's because he's corrupt, not because he's taking some principled stance based on research and evidence. He's corrupt. Simply put, he's bought. He's being lobbied and it's working. That's it. Don't pretend as if He's this, like, honest, good-faith actor.